Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ashkan from CFT College and this is another tutorial on post-processing CFT results in TechPlot. Uh, thank you for uh, being with us so far. I hope you've enjoyed our previous videos in, you know, this series or another playlist uh, that we have on the channel. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can generate, how you can make animation in transient simulation in TechPlot into this simulation. Mm, I think there is no difference whether you have 2D or 3D simulation. In 3D simulation, in 3D domain, first you need to create the contour uh, or velocity vectors that you want to make a video of. And then the procedure is uh, similar to what you will see in this tutorial. So before starting the video, please subscribe the channel. Please share this video with your friends. Uh, please give us a thumbs up and introduce us to your uh, friends. This is the only support I need uh, from you. Okay, now let's jump to the tech plot. This is tech plot, as you know. Uh, I want to uh, import uh, the data, fluent uh, data to the tech plot. Uh, the simulation was a flow over a cylinder, as you know, uh, which is transient and has the uh, von Karman vortex, vortex shedding. And it's a good thing to uh, make a video from. Uh, so basically, I just wanted to uh, tell you this first. There are two different methods that you can uh, import that you can export uh, the CFT results from ANSYS Fluent in order to you know, load them in TechPlot and make animation. The first one is simply uh, you know save data and case files. As you can see here, you can see data files, uh, 40, I think, yeah, 40 data files in different times and the case file. But there is another option, there is another method. If, for example, you have a 3D simulation, I think um, you need a huge uh, space if you want to uh, save lots of uh, you know, data files during the transient simulation in order to make the animation from that data. Uh, so another way is to go to calculation activities and create an automatic export. Uh, you should do it, you should do it uh, before starting the calculation. Uh, click on create solution ex data export. Uh, modify the format to tech plot. Uh, give specify a name. Uh, here you can uh, you know select the uh, data uh, export data frequency, for example, every one time a step, maybe five time steps, or every, for example, 0 0.1 seconds. So it depends on you. Um, and then this is the location that you want to file save. And uh, this is the append appendix for the file name. Uh, you can choose whether time step or flow time. And here uh, you can choose the quantities that you want. For example, if you know that you want to uh, make animation um, for or of uh, velocity magnitude or static pressure or what else, uh, vorticity, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, Q criterion, normalized and row, or lambda 2, or temperature, or any other parameter that you want, you should select them. Uh, be careful about this. Think about this because after the simulation, you can't add any quantity. 
So you should decide before starting the calculation. Uh, if, it, if it's a 2D simulation, you don't need to uh, select any surfaces, but in 3D simulation, for example, if you have created an isosurface or a plane, uh, you can select the plane or isosurface here and click on OK. Then you will have some PLT files, TechPlot files, and you can import uh, those files into TechPlot. Uh, the difference is uh, the PLT uh, files uh, you have really, uh, you know, smaller size. Why? Because not all the quantities, all the variables uh, are saved into those files. So this is the difference. The data file usually has a huge uh, size. We cannot uh, save lots of them. So that's the difference. Uh, now, uh, let me select all of them, all the data files and the case file. Click on OK. Oops. Let me do it again. Okay, now it's okay. As you can see, this is the CFD domain. Let me create a contour of, for example, um, X velocity. Let me change the uh, color map. Okay. Uh, as soon as you import the transient data into TechPlot, you will see this bar here, an initial solution time bar. As you can see, uh, all the time steps you have saved are accessible here. Let me see, let me check to see if we have Z vorticity. No, it's not here. I will have another tutorial of how we can uh, calculate new variables, but just for mm, this uh, tutorial, you can go to analyze, calculate variables, select uh, for example, Z vorticity, calculate, close, and now you will have new variable named Z vorticity. Uh, I believe we should modify the levels. Uh, set level, for example, minimum minus 50, 50, and 11. Okay, no. Minus 20, 20, 11. Now it's better. Uh, you can uh, modify the color map to grayscale, change it to continuous. But when you change uh, this to continuous, you should modify min and max here. See? I think it's better. Uh, okay. Okay, I will click on close. Here you have the legend. If I double click on that, you can modify it. For example, the horizontal. Uh, you know all of this uh, if you have watched my previous videos. Uh, for animation, it's good to deselect the plot x and y axis and now you can see the vortex shedding behind this cylinder in different at different time steps so here if you click on play button you can see that animation and but how you can save it how you can export it if you click on this setting button here, you will have 
some uh, details here. Starting time, which is zero. Ending time, it's four. You can modify them. The time skip. skip. I have. Uh, I don't have much. Uh, you know, time steps. Uh, so I don't want to skip any of them. So the one is okay. The animation direction can be forward, backward, loop, or bounce. Uh, forward is fine for me. And this is the current time step. You can choose the first time step. Uh, here, you can modify the speed of the animation. See, I have 41 time steps. So basically, I will have 41 frames. So if I choose, uh, for example, 10, the final video would be four seconds. If you want to have uh, a longer, uh, you know, video, you should decrease this. But you know that mm, uh, in that way, you need. Uh, it's better to have uh, more time steps. Otherwise, the quality of the uh, export the quality of the video uh, wouldn't be good. So it's it depends on you. You you should uh, test different uh, you know frame per second to to get the best video that you want. So you should check this option. And here you should you can modify the format mp4 abi whatever you want i'm always okay with uh mpeg4 uh you can choose uh this the first option use the width of image on the screen uh or you can enter the width manually and here again you can see the animation speed frames per second uh, if you click on OK, you can see the animation. Let me change the name first. Try and let me save it here. See? It's rendering and the video is ready now. Okay, let me play that video for you. It's here. See, it? it's only 100 kilobytes. And this is the resulted video. As you can see, it's only four seconds. You can decrease the FPS or you can increase the time steps. Uh, okay. So uh, let me check uh, if I could say anything else. Oh, um, let us try uh, to see whether we can add the time step uh, at the solution time. Um, insert text. So I want text here, for example, time equals this one uh, and and uh, parentheses and you should write this one solution time this is for the format oops sorry you don't need that you can here now you have this let me see uh, so it's good to have that uh, by adding this, we are telling that uh, the format should be float with two decimals. You can increase it or you can decrease it, whatever you want. Um, uh, highlight this, select all of them, and then you can change the font. Time New Roman, you can make it bold, you can increase the size, and you know, 
the color uh, that's it I think except and you can modify the position now you will have uh, the solution time I think if you double click on that you can add for example second for the unit now I think it's better so now if I for example decrease the FPS to 8 8 and export the video second try now it's done we can watch the second video yes as you can see now you have the solution time uh, in this video yeah, I think it's good it's uh, pretty good so now uh, in this tutorial uh, after watching this you know how to import uh, this transient data into TechPlot from Francis Fluent. You saw that there are two different ways. And now you know that uh, how you can generate and make the animation. You know all the details, all the settings. And uh, you also know how to add the solution time to your uh, animation. So that's it. This is the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, please share them with your friends please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe the channel thank you for watching again until the next video take care of yourselves and bye bye